in unraveling. You with me? Watch this. Paul Warburg, a Jewish banker, tied in with the Rothschilds, bankers, European, they have always wanted to get control of America's ability to print money. The Constitution warns that America must never let anyone set up a central bank that takes away Congress's right to print money. But in December 1913, after meetings on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia, these bankers met with members of Congress. And while Congress was busy with uh, Christmas, they rushed through Congress that which is called the Federal Reserve Act. And from that act, the Federal Reserve Bank was established. I hope you all are all right. Because I'm fine. Now, after the Federal Reserve came into being, Most of these bankers happen to be Jewish. I'm going to stop here. Brother Farrakhan is not anti-Semitic. But I have to say that these people claim to be Jews. And now the Federal Reserve Bank, they really don't have nobody overseeing them. Congressman Ron Paul is trying his best, but he's like a man crying in the wilderness to try and scrap the Federal Reserve and bring their right to print money back to the U.S. Congress. Please listen. I'm not going to be too much longer. My dear brothers and sisters, in 1913, the ADL was formed, the Anti-Defamation League. We know that anti-Semitism is a live germ in America. And so it's right that an anti-defamation league that would spot anything that would defame Jewish people and defend. There's nothing wrong with that. But if the purpose was to keep anybody from criticizing these bankers and what they started doing to the American people, then the power that they were amassing and they started calling you anti-Semitic and then using the power that they have to destroy you. In 1913, thereabouts, the tax code, the IRS is formed. 
Because if somebody else is going to print the money, they're going to loan it to governments at an interest rate. And the people who are the citizens are to be taxed to pay the debt. Does that make sense? Watch how this works. In 1913, the debt of the United States of America was a little over a billion dollars. It's not even 100 years later. And the debt as of November the 24th, 12 trillion, 16 billion, 320 million, 934,466 dollars and 71 cents. Now, from one billion, less than a hundred years later, 12 trillion. And if you add in Social Security, if you add in Medicare and Medicaid, the debt is over 60 trillion dollars. America cannot pay that kind of debt. Are you listening? Who is Goldman Sachs? Lehman Brothers? AIG? Merrill Lynch? Bank of America? See, they were all a part of a scheme. But this scheme is the work of a devil. No, I'm sorry. It's the work of Satan. Dumb devils participated. Now look at this. See, Muslims. Maliki Yaumidin that Allah is master of the day of requital, master of the day of religion, master of the law of justice and judgment. And if Satan's time to rule is up, then whatever he's doing, God is over it. He's not doing it on his own. That's why the Quran said, and the Jews planned, and Allah planned, and Allah is the best of planners. Ever since 1914, there has been an effort by certain groups, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergs, the Council of Foreign Relations, CFR. And these are forces along with the Freemasons that are secret societies that are desirous of producing a world government. A world government that's run by an elite that controls the resources of every nation on the earth. So the unraveling of this world in the mind of Satan was to set up a one world government where he would be in charge. <laughs> now since 1913 look at this 
Woodrow Wilson, who presided over both the United States and Princeton University. Woodrow Wilson said, no, the war, World War I, began in 1914. But Woodrow Wilson, who was our president, said that we were not going to get involved in such war. But he was over Princeton, and he used his prominence in setting the nation's educational goals and policies. Listen to what he said. We want a class of persons to have a liberal education, and we want another class of persons, a very much larger class of necessity in every society to forego the privilege of a liberal education and fit themselves to perform specific difficult manual tasks. So what this president was in favor of through education was to set up a class that would have liberal education but the larger class would be the workers for the educated but on top of them the satanic mind was operating I hope I'm not boring you. Now, there's a book out called The Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Have you heard of that book? I'd like to read something that Mr. Perkins wrote about himself. Listen to him. He said, my job, wait a minute, he's on a job. Who's he working for? Who's his employer? Watch this. My job is to encourage world leaders to become part of a vast network that promotes United States commercial interests. In the end, those leaders become ensnared in a web of debt that ensures their loyalty. We can draw on them whenever we desire to satisfy our political, economic, or military needs. If an economic hitman is completely successful, the loans are so large that the debtor, the recipient country, is forced to default on its payments after a few years. And when this happens, then like the mafia, we demand our pound of flesh. This often includes one or more of the following, control over their United Nations votes. Second, the installation of military bases in their countries. America has over 130 military bases in countries all over the world. What does she need that for? She is an imperialist. And this is the American Empire. Or the last thing is access to precious resources. We got you in debt. We take your resources, such as oil or the Panama Canal. Of course, the debtor still owes us the money and another country is added to our global empire.